In the previous part of this lesson, we looked at how to use a simple if statement to perform a logical test and then execute a single instruction if that logical test returned true. In this part of the lesson, we'll look at how we can execute multiple instructions based on the result of the logical test by using something called a block if. Let's start by opening up the file that I've already downloaded and extracted. And then if we need to, we can click the enable content button. And we essentially have the exact same system that we saw at the start of the previous lesson. I've already added a single basic if statement, which checks if the movie title is empty before we add our details to the list. So at this point, were I to click the add to list button, nothing appears to happen. My if statement checks that this is empty. And if so, it exits from the subroutine. The problem for the end user is it simply appears that the system doesn't work. We get no information about why it's not adding our details to the list, although it should be fairly obvious, I agree. So what I'd like to do is add some more instructions to our if statement that perhaps highlights the background color of cell B2 in a different color, and perhaps adds an error message to one of the cells below the list so that the user has more information about what's gone wrong. Let's head into the Visual Basic Editor then and see how we can add some more instructions within our if statement. So our single line if statement that we wrote in the previous example executes this one single instruction when this condition returns true. If we have lots of instructions to write, we don't really want to add those to a single line. The line would become somewhat unwieldy and difficult to read and edit later on. So what we're going to do is take this single instruction exit sub down to the next line. I'm just going to remove this space after the keyword then, and then drop this line down by pressing enter. And I'm going to tab in the exit sub keyword one space as well. Now, when you break an if statement into multiple different lines like this, there's one extra thing you must do. And you'll get a clue about what that thing is if you attempted to run the subroutine at this point. If I attempt to run this subroutine, I'll get a compile error popping up virtually immediately that tells me I now have a block if without an end if. So when I write an if statement finishing with the word then without any instruction following it, the editor knows that I'm generating something called a block if. And a block if has to know when it ends, just like a subroutine needs to know when it ends with end sub, we need to write an end if statement as well. So I'm going to click OK, and then I'm going to stop running this procedure with the reset button. And then I'm going to add the end if statement below the instruction that I'm carrying out. It's worth pointing out that our block if statement behaves in exactly the same way as our single inline if statement from earlier. Let's just rearrange the screen so we can see both the VB editor and Excel in the same screen. And then let's step through the add to list procedure using the F8 key. So currently cell B2 is indeed empty. If I were to use the F8 key to begin stepping through, when this condition returns true, it enters the block if, executes any statements within it. And because the only statement in there so far is exit sub, the entire thing simply ends. We should also demonstrate that the code works when the condition returns false. So let's add in some new details into cell B2. Let's think of a new film. Uh, Incredibles 2, I saw that recently. Let's see, I saw that on the 1st of January 2019. And it was super. Let's call it super. Great. So if I then select my add to list procedure again and use the F8 key, this time this statement will return false. So it will simply jump over all the statements within the if end if block and then continue with the rest of the subroutine. So once I reach this point, I can simply press F5 to continue through to the end of the procedure. So although the block if and the single inline if that we wrote earlier behave in exactly the same way, the massive advantage of writing a block if is that we can add as many other instructions between if and end if as we like. So let's write a few extra instructions that will make it more obvious to the user what's gone wrong. First of all, let's change the background color of cell B2. So let's add a new instruction. We must do this before we exit the subroutine, of course, otherwise we'll have exited the procedure before these instructions get a chance to be carried out. So let's say range b2.interior.color equals, uh, and let's go for RGB pink, I think. Then let's also make sure that we select cell B2 as well, so that the user doesn't have to select cell B2 themselves. It's always nice when you can be lazy about these sorts of things. So let's say range b2.select. And then just to make it absolutely obvious what's happened, we'll present a simple little error message in cell A6. So I've already formatted cell A6 to have a red font color. And I'm just going to write some text in there that tells the user to enter a film name. So let's say range a6.value 
equals enter a fill name. And you could add the insult of your choice to the end of that just to uh, um, insult your users, but I'm going to avoid doing that at this point. So let's give our new system a quick test. If we remove the film title from cell B2, let's get rid of that. And then let's click into a different cell as well. So we know that we don't have cell B2 still selected. And then we can begin stepping through our add to list procedure by clicking somewhere inside it and then pressing F8. So B2 clearly is empty, which means we should enter the if statement and then begin executing these instructions. So the background color of cell B2 will become pink and we select cell B2 and then uh, an error message will appear in cell E6. And then we simply exit the subroutine so that we don't add that incomplete record to the end of the list. It's also worthwhile thinking about what happens if things do work correctly. So we want to make sure that our problem indicators disappear if the user has added a value to cell B2. So let's make sure that we've added some code that does that. Below the end if block, let's write a new statement that says range b2.interior.color equals, and we can go for XL none. And then let's say that we say range a6 dot clear contents. So that will remove the error message that we've written into cell A6. So let's just test that that part of the system works as well. We should fill in a new fill name in cell B2. Uh, what else have I seen recently? What we do in the shadows. Uh, and let's say I watched that on say, I don't know, the 20th of the first 2019. And then let's add a quick review at dark. And if I click the add to list button now, rather than stepping through, we should find that all these details get added into the list and our little problem indicators should also disappear. And that's exactly right. If I then remove the film title from cell B2 again and click add to list, our problem indicators come back. At this point, you could either continue with the extra practice session in this lesson, which asks you to write some more block if statements. Alternatively, you can carry on to the next part of the lesson, which explains how to add an else clause to an if statement.